Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a wonderful day. I am. This is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it. I am so glad to be in the land of the, of the living. I thank God for a reasonable portion of health and strength. And I'll tell you, my friends, I am uh, determined to serve the God of the Bible and I'm more excited than I've ever been before. God is doing great things. Now, I want to read a passage of scripture to you and jump into something right quick because I I have something that I want to to share with you, and I want you to pay attention uh, uh, to an event coming up in February, and we're going to see how some people are going to respond. Now, I want to read to you Daniel uh, chapter number 6 and verse 10. It says, Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house, and his window being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God. Now listen, as he did aforetime. Now, you know, you who, if you are a decent Bible student, you know that this is, the context is, some people who were out to get Daniel, they couldn't get him because he had an excellent spirit. He had a work work ethic that they could not compete with. So they, since they couldn't find anything wrong with his his job performance, they couldn't find, uh, they couldn't uh, uh, determine, you know, he didn't show up late. He didn't leave early. He didn't mess with his time card. He gave an honest day's work for an honest day's pay. He didn't spend his time at work posting all day long. He really had an excellent spirit. He performed. He dotted every I, crossed every T, and looped every L. And his enemies, they were jealous of this prosperous minority. (laughs) <laughs> a minority in a, a man who was from Israel, a man who was from the southern kingdom, his nation taken captive by uh, Nebuchadnezzar. He's taken as a child uh, to uh, Babylon. He grows up from a, from a child in Babylon. Strange gods, strange food, strange everything, but he stays true to his God and he gets elevated and he performs like nobody's business. And when they could not find anything wrong with his work ethics, they attacked his religion. They attacked his beliefs. They got the king to pass a law that for the next uh, 30 days, um, the people could not pray to for to any other God except the king. And when Daniel heard about this, Daniel went into his chamber when he knew that this had been, listen, signed into law. Signed into law. Brother Gary, I'm a big believer that there are times when civil disobedience is necessary. The truth is, saints, just because they make a thing legal, that doesn't mean that they make it right. And there is a reason why the Bible doesn't just nakedly say to the believers, obey the laws of the land. Do whatever the law tell you to do, because sometimes wickedness is codified into law. And if and and you can make it legal, but it's still wicked. Daniel stood his ground and he prayed. Now, last Sunday. Uh, In the message that I preach, he still delivers, talking about the God of the Bible. The Apostle Paul said, and out of them all the Lord delivered me. I mentioned a brave young man whom uh, I've never met, but I tell you, he has this preacher's respect. Um, He is a, a hockey player and he plays for the Philadelphia Flyers. His name is Ivan Pro Provero. I, I hope that I'm pronouncing his name correctly. He wears uh, jersey number nine. And by the way, uh, his jersey uh, sold out. It's sold out. You can't find it. Uh, uh, NHLshop.com. Maybe they have restocked it. But I tell you what, it sold out big time because this one hockey player, 
in all of the NHL. There's one player on the on the team of the uh, Philadelphia Flyers. He decided that he wasn't going to participate in Pride Night uh, back here in January this month. Um, and he and he didn't participate because he was a Christian. I respect him. One man standing alone. They asked him, what is your faith? Christian Orthodox. Oh, no, Russian Orthodox. And he was not going to wear, he was not going to participate. Um, and uh, on Tuesday, uh, look at this. He shocked the ultra-woke NHL when he decided to skip the Flyers warm-up period because he did not want to wear the team's LGBT pride jersey. Maybe this guy's a member of Upper Room. LGBT pride jersey or use the rainbow hockey stick that the players were given to virtue signal uh, the homosexual lobby. Uh, I, I applaud this man. I applaud him for having the courage of his convictions. He said, uh, I respect everybody. He told the reporters, I respect everyone's choices. My choice is to stay true to myself and my religion. His jersey sold out. Hey, you little weak punk boys on the team. I bet nobody bought your jersey that week uh, for, for being a ditto head and also a virtue sing singular uh, dropping all of your conviction going along to get along. Oh God, we need more people who will stand. Now, what I want you to do is to pay attention, see, because it was brought to my attention that the Atlanta Hawks, <clears throat> Atlanta, the Hawks, uh, are going to play a game on February the 9th. The Atlanta Hawks today announced that award-winning R&B singer, uh, songwriter, and LBGTQIA plus ally, Carrie Hilson, will perform at the halftime, at halftime for the annual Pride Night presented by your your Atlanta area BMW centers at the award-winning State Farm Atlanta uh, Arena on Thursday, February the 9th. You know, February used to be Black History Month, and now we, it's shortest month of the year, and we have to share it, have to share that, and uh, I tell you, I just wonder what's going on. But uh, the Atlanta Hawks have already announced that... Uh, they're going to have this game and they're going to have this young lady to sing. Um, uh, I don't know her. I've never purchased, uh, uh, I've never heard, to my knowledge, I've never heard her, her music. I don't intend to listen to it from what I can understand. Uh, she's a strikingly beautiful young lady and um, uh, uh, we wish her well. Um, I don't know why she is a LGBTQIA plus ally. I know this. Uh, if she is this, I'm praying for that she accepts Jesus Christ and becomes a Christian because uh, it, when you're born again, you don't become an ally of Sodom and Gomorrah. Nor do you become an ally of Sodom and Gomorrah behavior. Amen. And, uh, and that's the end of that. If I got any Christians out there who disagree with that, you need to read the Bible. And, and God's word, by the way, has not changed. So she's going to be uh, singing and uh, doing the halftime program and all that. My question is, <clears throat> are there any Hawks basketball players, and I don't know, claiming to know Jesus? Are there any Hawks basketball players who believe that this lifestyle is wrong? Will that, I'm saying any, will there be one player on February the 9th who will be as brave as good old Ivan, uh, this one standalone hockey player who stood his ground? Will we get just one Atlanta Hawk basketball player to say, you know what? I don't go along with it. Uh, so I I respect everyone else's decisions to do so, but uh, I, I, I'm not going to do it. 
Um, I wonder, I wonder, is that one uh, that has the courage of his conviction? Time will tell and uh, we will see. Uh, I'm not going to hold my breath and uh, I'm not a betting man, but if I was, I wouldn't bet on it. But I sure hope I'm proven wrong. Look at this. Um, uh, uh, to chip off the festivities, voices of notes, Atlanta homosexual men's choir chorus will sing the national anthem. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I, oh, Lord. Ah, come on here. This is bad. This is bad. This is bad. And I pray that the Christians in Atlanta, you all ought to pray against this. Let's pray that God does something. And uh, I, I realize you can't control what this private uh, business does, but uh, I'm just hoping that the media will at least uh, interview uh, some Christians there in Atlanta. Because there are some fine Christians in Atlanta because I've met some. Uh, who live there, who love Jesus Christ. Let your voice be heard and the Lord will bless you real good. Now, my friends, I know sometimes you wonder and many of you tell me, Bishop, thank you so much for merging current events and things that are going on in the world with the scripture. And the reason I do this uh, is because there's no way to preach God's truth without it. And I just want to say, if you want to hear me expound on it on tomorrow uh, from 1 uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time to 2.30 p.m., I will be taking participating in a wonderful, wonderful uh, annual workers meeting um, with uh, uh, the saints out in California with the great Bishop, Bishop Ely. And uh, I was invited by Bishop, my dear friend, Bishop Ulysses Henderson, and I will be a part of an empowerment day session. And we're going to be talking about speaking out on issues that matter. And I'll be joined by Pastor Ryan Sims and Pastor Shep Crawford. And I look forward to uh, getting a chance to share with these men of God. So my friends, I will tell you why uh, I spend so much time uh, uh, merging the two and, 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 and fusing them, if you will. Um, and I'll, and, and I'll give biblical, biblical reasons as I always, always do. Now, I want us to continue to pray. We need to pray about what's going on in our nation. We need to pray. You know, we're up in the ante. We're sending 31 tanks, uh, Abram tanks to Ukraine. Let's pray. Let's pray about it. Um, because, uh, you know, we're not in war with Russia. And uh, I, I personally do not want to see an a, a escalation. And uh, I, I pray that uh, those who are in charge know what they're doing, because as we up the ante, um, um, uh, nobody wants nuclear war. Nobody wants mutual, mutually assured destruction. I want to live and you want to live. I want to see my grandkids get grown. You want to see your children and grandkids, children get grown. You bought your house. You live in, you, you live where you live. We go to work every day. We're doing what we're doing. And uh, we don't want to find ourselves in trouble uh, due to bad policies. So let us pray. And uh, I, I want you to join me. But before I invite you to service tonight, I want to give my condolences. Garth Kuntz, the founder um, of, of TCT, of the, of the Marion-based TCT, uh, passed away. And we want to give our condolences uh, to this man of God who has done such a tremendous work and made this medium possible for us to be a part of it. And I pray that God will bless his family and keep them um, uh, through this time. And God will. He is a keeper and, and he's a mighty God. And, uh, and this young man died, uh, this gentleman died at the age of 86. He's gone home to be with Jesus and his works still remain. And we'll believe in God to continue uh, on the work of the Lord and to continue to be a part of the TCT family. They've been good to us. And I pray that our being on this network is good 
for them. In the name of the Lord. Now, I want you to join me tonight. I want you to join me because I have some things that I want to share about you. I'm preaching from the Bible. I'm teaching from the Bible and I'm going to be talking about the Bible because listen, with all the things that's going on and the things that we bring up and all of this uh, stuff that's, that's happening, let me tell you, the believer is still told not to worry, <laughs> not to be afraid. We're told to lift up our head because our redemption draweth nigh. We're told things, we're told to, to behold certain things that would take place. It says, but the end is not yet. And we have work to do for Jesus. And we're going to do it inspired by the word of God. So my friends, I want you to join me right here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. <laughs> oh yeah, Bible study. You know, I still I get a kick out of doing that. And I, I, I was so I got a text one time. Somebody thought I was going to forget the drum roll. No, sir. the word of the Lord is just right. I love ministering the word of the Lord. I praise God for you, our audience. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. I get a chance to minister as I close to some of the most uh, uh, finest people in the world. Just this past Sunday, oh, people drove down all the way from Connecticut, a mother and a daughter. And Bishop, we're moving into the area. We want to be a part of the ministry. We, we see this happening more and more and more. People literally um, pulling up their stakes, moving to the area, joining the church because they love the word of God. Somebody asked me one time, I said, Bishop, why are so many people against you? And my response was, they're not. See, it depends on what crowd you hang with. There are people who love God's truth. There are people who lift up and pray for preachers who preach God's truth. Now, it could be that uh, you're in a crowd of people who just don't love God's truth. And, and so you don't hear from those people uh, who love God's truth. But I hear from them on a regular basis, see them make great sacrifices just to be in the live services. And it certainly encourages this preacher. I love you. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you tonight. God bless.